Four ways to reflect objects in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about four different ways to reflect an object in Adobe Illustrator using the Reflect tool and Live Mirror. So let's jump right on in. All right, for the first method, let's just draw a star out here on our artboard, and I'm going to give it a black fill and a yellow stroke with a little bit of a thickness to the stroke, just so you can see when I uh, create copies what that looks like. All right, so uh, the first method is going to be to use the Reflect tool, which is hotkey O. And when you have this selected and you click on Reflect tool, it will automatically put this little um, kind of anchor point in the middle of your star. If you want to move that, you can just click anywhere, I think outside or inside of your star. And let's just say, let's hover over this anchor point and click there. Then if I click and hold, you'll see that I can kind of reflect this around that anchor point. So it's just gonna rotate all around here. Now, if I hold Alt while I'm doing this, I can create a copy. So if I wanted to create a copy of this star and put it right here, and then I release and I've got a copy. Let's say I wanted to do that again. I just need to click again on this spot for my anchor point. Click and drag while holding Alt, and I can do this again and create another star copy. And if I want to do a different spot, or let's say I just want to come way out here, you can come way out here, do the same thing. You know, it'll rotate all around. I'm holding Alt to create a copy, and you can just put a copy way over here. For method two, we'll use the pen tool. I'm just going to draw something that has a hard edge on the left side and on the bottom. And then I'm going to finish it off with just like a, um, a rounded part on this side. So this would be if you are, um, if you're going to just right click. So we'll right click, transform, hit reflect. Let's move this over here so we can see, make sure preview is selected. And we'll do a vertical uh, reflect. And then we're going to hit copy. So that's going to create a copy of what we just had, reflecting it on the vertical. Now, uh, oftentimes when I'm doing this, I'll, I'll uh, combine these two so that they're right next to each other. An easy way to do that is to select both, right, uh, left click on one of your objects, whichever one you want to be the key object, come over to Align, and then hit Distribute Spacing, like so, and make sure that it's a set to zero. If it's set to some other, it's going to leave a, a gap in the middle. So you just want to make sure that's on zero. And then they'll combine and come together. Now you can do the same thing. <clears throat> Let's right click, reflect. Let's do horizontal this time. Create a copy. There we go. Rinse, repeat, select both. Click once on the key object and distribute this way. And you could also do it this way. Let me <clears throat> click and drag. And I'm holding shift and Alt to make a copy. And then I'm going to right click and hit Transform, Reflect. But this time I'm not going to hit Copy here because I already made a copy. I'm just going to hit OK because it's horizontally. Good. And we'll do the same thing. Click once on here to make that your key object and distribute. So not all of those things are now perfectly aligned to each other and perfectly uh, symmetrical. The third method will use what's called Live Mirror. And what we want to do, make sure you've got Smart Guides on. Um, you'll just create a line segment tool all the way from top to bottom. I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit thinner, probably just a one or two. One's good. And then we'll want to go to Layer, <clears throat> hit New. Go ahead and lock this layer. And we'll do this again, make a line here. And maybe we'll go ahead and hide that one so you can't see that you can tell that you've made a new one. And we're going to go here as well. Now, one thing you'll want to do that I didn't do with this layer is make sure that everything is perfectly aligned vertically and horizontally. So in your Align tab, make sure that Align to Artboard is selected. Go ahead and select your lines. Click here once and click here once. Ah, As you can see, we weren't perfectly centered on the horizontal. <clears throat> but now we are. And so, uh, next thing you'll want to do is create a shape over here or draw something. Let's just do a circle with a black fill so we can see. 
Go ahead and select everything in this layer. Make sure that you do so by clicking this circle and it will fill in. Then come up here to Effect. Um, we'll go Distort and Transform, Transform. Hit Reflect X. Make sure that Preview is selected. Hit One Copy and it should look like this. And go ahead and hit OK. And so now if it works, if I grab this circle, the one over here should move as well and reflect perfectly up and down anywhere in my artboard. Now the only time this will mess up is if you go beyond your artboard over here, we'll screw everything up. So just make sure you stay inside the artboard or things will get a little bit funky. <clears throat> now to clean this up, because I don't really want, I don't really want my art to come over here on this side. So to clean things up, we're going to grab a rectangle tool, start at this anchor point here, click and drag all the way down to the bottom of the artboard. It should be covered in black. And then just make sure that it's at the top. It is, that's great. Come over here to make release clipping mask and click that. And then I would also lock this layer. And then while you're at it, go ahead and just put those layers away, maybe lock them as well. You don't wanna see that anymore. So what that does is as we come over here, now the, the circle is gonna disappear and as it's coming back into this section of the artboard, we'll see just parts of it, which is gonna really create some cool looking art. So the easiest way to kind of do things from here on out is probably just use the paintbrush tool. And if I double click on it, I like these settings um, all the way on the smoothness because I'm not very good at drawing by hand with a mouse. If you've got a tablet, you might want to bring it down to more accurate um, on the fidelity meter, meter, but I like going with smooth and I'll show you why. So let's increase the size of this using the right bracket to go up. You can use left bracket to go down, right bracket to go up. That's probably about right. And then just kind of start somewhere on the left side and draw a shape like so. And it's going to live mirror whatever you do, which is really, really cool. So you can just draw any sorts of designs and it will make them look like such. You don't have to be all that great at it, really. I mean, that's what I like about this so much is that sloppiness kind of is rewarded. Now, of course, you can do this with shapes if you want to just create other shapes. You don't have to use the brush tool. You can, um, you can use the pen tool and do things like this. And let's just go into stroke maybe real quick. Maybe create something kind of grungy using a brush. Now that's not pretty at it by any stretch, but you get the idea. The idea is that you can create these pieces and then move them in and out as you see fit to create something symmetrical. This is a really good method for if you like to draw things by hand and then you want to later come in and create it in a vector format and just make sure that everything is perfectly the same on the left side as it is on the right side. Method four is essentially the same thing. We're just gonna add a few more steps so that we can do an even more intricate design. Uh, start off by creating a line segment from top to bottom, perfectly centered, and from left to right, perfectly centered. And the smart guides told me that they were perfectly centered, but I'm gonna go ahead and select everything anyway, come over to align, make sure that our line to artboard is select, select it and click both of these once, we are good. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is grab this one here and do effect, distort, transform. You'll want to create one, two, three copies, and we'll want to do an angle of 135. And so this is what your artboard should look like. Looks good. Now the next thing you want to do is just, let's grab your your brush tool and we'll increase the size a little bit so we can really see this and just draw a line from about here to here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, now we're going to select everything in that layer over here, clicking the circle, everything selected. Great effect. This should have applied transform already. So go ahead and click that on there since you just used it. We will want to drop the copies to one reflect X and set that to zero. So you're just creating one copy at this point, hit OK. We're gonna do the same thing again, everything's still selected, don't do anything else. We're gonna up the copies to three 
and we're gonna go to 90 degrees. Oh wait, it's more than three, isn't it? One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, that's right. Take off, reflect X. There we go. So 90 degrees, reflect X, and copies three. Hit OK. And now you've got this one piece is showing up in each one of these sections. Um, to clean this up, you will want to create another clipping mask. So let's grab our rectangle tool. We'll start about here and actually want to make sure I'm right on that center piece. I don't want to be off and make sure we're here too. And then just come in and make sure that this aligns to that point there. Go ahead and press the minus key to get rid of this anchor point. And let's just make sure that we're nice and centered. It does not look like we are perfectly centered. There we go, that's a nice snap. And this is a nice snap. Let's see if this one is. This one probably needs to be moved a little bit. Let's go ahead and move it out of the way so I can see better. And I may not be able to get this just right. It may be kind of difficult, but we'll get close. That ought to do good enough for now. Uh, if you're really picky about it, you might want to try uh, to refine that. But for this tutorial, it should be fine. All right, we'll come over here and click on Make Release Clipping Mask. With that, I'd go ahead and lock that clipping mask and probably lock these and hide them as well. And so what's cool about this, let's get the paint brush tools. Now, anywhere we paint over here, it's not going to show up, but if we paint inside it will and of course it will only show up if it's black let's create a black stroke let's draw here there you go makes some really cool designs and let's just do a little bit skinnier maybe a little bit skinnier so you can just do lots of cool stuff with this um, setting and it's going to live update all the quadrants for you Again, you can do more than what we did too. Uh, you just have to figure out what your angles would have to be, what number of copies you'd need to have, and then you just have to create a skinnier triangle slice. Um, but it essentially works the same way. So those are all the methods that I would use to uh, create symmetry in uh, Adobe Illustrator using Reflect Tool and uh, Live Mirror Tools. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Uh, which of these is probably most helpful for you? Which one do you think you'll actually end up using? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments. And then press the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.